Hey all, Eric Christensen here with the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. Today we're going to cover bupropion. Brand name is Wellbutrin. Uh, Also historically you may have heard the brand name Zyban used as well. The mechanism of action of uh, bupropion is really not well understood. Um, However, there's definitely a a thought or belief that um, it's got activity on dopamine as well as norepinephrine within the brain. So with that, if we think about other uh, historic classical antidepressants, most antidepressants really target uh, serotonin. So we've got the SSRIs, the SNRIs, and medications like that. Most of them... Uh, like I mentioned, target that ter- serotonin. So this is kind of a unique thing with bupropion where we don't feel that it, it targets serotonin like some of those other drugs. So in clinical practice, I've definitely seen bupropion added on um, to another antidepressant for augmentation to help um, manage that depression. So obviously depression, uh, as I'm talking about it, is one of the uh, common uses of this medication. I would say one of the most common uses. The second one uh, that I see most common probably in clinical practice is smoking cessation. And I do want to uh, remind you as you're working with patients, whatever your role is, bupropion, a lot like the other antidepressants, takes a while to work. And in both depression and smoking cessation, it's not going to be an immediate effect. So definitely at least, you know, a week or two uh, to really start to begin um, an onset of of potential benefit and, you know, weeks thereafter, hopefully uh, ramping up that benefit. But again, not going to work in most situations within, you know, three to five to seven days. It's just not going to... start working uh, that quickly in most cases. Some other more um, rare, I guess, uses for uh, Wellbutrin or Bupropion, Uh, ADHD. uh, It's an off-label use that uh, you may have seen it uh, before. Another one is uh, weight loss. And with weight loss, there's actually a combination product naltrexone uh, in combination with bupropion uh, that is uh, FDA approved, I believe. So if we think about some of our other uh, antidepressants, one of the big complaints, particularly in um, maybe younger patients um, that already have trouble with weight, is some of the antidepressants are uh, weight positive. They can cause weight gain. So um, mirtazapine, uh, maybe paroxetine, some of the SSRIs, some of the other SSRIs, TCAs, those tend to be weight gaining in effect and can obviously lead to that problem. And even if the patient's getting help with their depression, uh, the weight gain side effect may really, really be bothersome um, to those patients. So uh, that is a situation where you, you might kind of see it used off-label is potentially um, help or promote uh, weight loss a little bit there. So I kind of went into, um, blurred into side effects a little bit from the use of the drug and the potential um, weight loss effect. That is a uh, potential uh, adverse effect. Um, GI side effects can happen with Wellbutrin. Um, Probably one of the more common and and maybe um, side effects not leading to discontinuation, but maybe leading to to patients feeling a little uncomfortable, especially initially as they first get used to the drug. So keep that in mind when patients first start. Uh, Another more, um, you know, common one is bupropion tends to be more uh, activating and could contribute to insomnia. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. I know classically, uh, what I've seen with, you know, polypharmacy and the prescribing cascade is somebody gets put on bupropion, you know, one week, two weeks, three weeks later, they're complaining about insomnia and maybe they're taking over the counter melatonin or Tylenol PM or something like that to kind of combat 
um, that insomnia. So keep an eye on that uh, with uh, the potential side effect profile with bupropion. So GI and insomnia activating um, type effects uh, are probably the, the more common uh, side effects with bupropion. There is one that's pretty concerning if a patient has a history of seizures, especially, or at risk for seizures. So bupropion can lower seizure threshold. And actually in uh, my book, Pharmacotherapy, um, which you can actually get a free uh, copy if you're not an Audible member yet. So it's, a, it's an Audible book. I've got it also on Amazon as well um, as an ebook and, and hard copy. But in that book, I talk about a situation where a patient who was uh, taking, I believe it was phenytoin, um, for seizures was put on Wellbutrin and ended up having a seizure uh, after that initiation. So um, definitely a, a good little case scenario, a good reminder that bupropion can lower seizure threshold. And again, that free book, uh, you can get at reallifepharmacology.com slash free book. Now, one other uh, important clinical pearl uh, as far as the adverse effect profile goes or lack of adverse effect profile is many of the SSRIs, TCAs, uh, those drugs can cause uh, significant sexual dysfunction, leading to patients to become frustrated and discontinue the medication. Well, one of the ways that we combat this or try to get around this, um, or one of the ways we can try to get around it, is utilizing bupropion. Bupropion tends to have less of this problem than a lot of the other uh, traditional uh, antidepressants. So that is a clinical pearl. Uh, I've definitely seen come up in clinical practice as well. Now, I haven't done this a lot, but I do want to mention uh, dosage forms with bupropion. And the reason I'm doing so is because I have seen errors with this. Um, working in pharmacies, working with patients, um, I have seen uh, folks get, get goofed up on this. So uh, there is an immediate release formulation of bupropion. There is a sustained release uh, form of bupropion, and that's usually a 12-hour period, so that's taken twice a day, typically. And then there is an extended release formulation, which is once a day. So you can understand how it might get um, easy uh, to get a little confused or uh, mixed up on those. So pay attention uh, when there is a, a prescription um, and uh, what that dosage form is, because there are some uh, variations in the uh, kinetics and how the um, uh, drug is uh, absorbed and, and taken up into the body. So just wanted to point that out because I know I've seen a few errors on that. So let's take a quick break. Uh, we really want to thank you guys for all the support in the podcast. Uh, if you are um, inclined, you can absolutely check out what we have for sale as far as books, uh, NAPLEX content, BCPS, uh, BCACP, BCGP for pharmacists, uh, meded101.com slash store. Lots of really great uh, resources there uh, for clinicians, uh, pharmacists, as well as nurses. So uh, go check that out. Support our sponsor if you uh, enjoy the podcast. Also, if you uh, are loving the podcast, you're listening on, on iTunes or other uh, forms, of podcast delivery systems there, uh, go ahead and leave us a, a, a kind rating and review. We certainly uh, greatly appreciate it. And share us with a friend. Uh, that always helps us uh, grow our audience and, um, yeah, gets good clinical information uh, out to healthcare professionals. So there are a few drug interactions with bupropion. Uh, first, as far as drug interactions goes, you know, I've kind of talked about that seizure lowering potential. So if you see patients on phenytoin, on levetiracetam, which is a brand name Keppra, uh, carbamazepine, anything that's potentially used for seizures, you definitely got to dig into that patient history. See, do they have a seizure risk? Are they using some of those medications for something else, um, which would be rare for something like phenytoin and um, Keppra, um, but carbamazepine could be used for other things. So if you see a potential anti-seizure medication on board, uh, you've got to take a peek 
um, and make sure that the, the risk of bupropion has been assessed and looked at because it certainly can lower seizure threshold. Uh, patients with uh, alcoholism and things like that may be at risk for seizures. Um, other medications, you know, I think of uh, maybe tramadol can lower seizure threshold. Uh, so think about that risk with seizures and how that might relate uh, to potentially contributing to an issue with drug interactions. Now the other pathway that bupropion may contribute to drug interactions is it inhibits CYP2D6. And so drugs to think about, or drugs that come to my mind, is codeine. Um, that's actually a prodrug. So it actually reduces the analgesic uh, opioid type effect from codeine. Codeine is converted to morphine by CYP2D6. If we block that enzyme with bupropion, that can lead to lower clinical efficacy, lower um, pain relief, if that's what we're using codeine for. Another one that's a prodrug and has active metabolites is tamoxifen. So tamoxifen is converted to active metabolites by CYP2D6. Okay, And so if bupropion inhibits that, we have the potential issue of reducing the effectiveness of tamoxifen. Now tamoxifen is used uh, in breast cancer. So obviously a really, really uh, important uh, drug interaction if we're blocking that drug um, from providing its uh, beneficial protective effects. Uh, one other unique one with uh, 2D6 uh, is atomoxetine or Stratera, which is used in ADHD. So inhibition of CYP2D6 by bupropion can raise uh, Stratera concentrations. So something to, to be aware of there. Uh, another one um, that, that comes to mind is potential to increase clozapine uh, levels with the addition of bupropion or increasing the dose um, onto uh, clozapine. Clozapine is um, you know, partially metabolized by uh, CYP2D6, so inhibition of that could raise levels over time. So obviously there's lots more um, potential drug interactions out there, uh, but just kind of wanted to give you some uh, good examples of uh, things that you, you may um, come across in, in your practice. So uh, I think that wraps it up for today. Uh, check out reallifepharmacology.com. Again, uh, for subscribers, I, I send out emails when I have a new podcast available. Um, in addition to subscribing, uh, you get a free 31-page PDF where I highlight three really uh, testable pearls, highly testable pearls on each medication in the uh, top 200. So free resource. You can absolutely check that out. I also have a 100-question uh, kind of practice pharmacology quiz, too, that's free. Uh, with uh, subscribing as well there. So uh, go check that out at reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, if questions, yeah, find us on the, the website there, hit the contact button, um, got suggestions, anything like that, um, send them our way. So signing off, Eric Christensen, pharmacist. Thanks for listening and uh, take care. Hope you have a great rest of your day.